put the PAP guide out for public comment. And we hear loudly your public comments. And this is a particular part where you were very loud, so to speak. And that was about our science CV implementation. And our uh, initial language um, that was in the draft document uh, indicated that beginning with the implementation of the PAP guide um, in 2020, January of 2023, you would be required to use science CV for completion of the biographical sketch and current and pending support. Now, again, um, we do listen to the community. So based on the response from the community, NSF will be delaying the requirement to use Science CV, the mandatory use of Science CV until October, 2023. So when we go live in January, you could use the revised biosketch in either Science CV or the NSF billable format. And the same will be true for current and pending support. It will only begin in October and the language will be very clear in the PAP guide with regard to this issue that we will not be enforcing use of the mandate for Science CV until October. So we um, are uh, hoping that this is very good news to the community and again, an affirmation that NSF really does listen to the community. Beginning in January, however, the certification requirements by senior personnel will be required whether you're using Science CV or whether the faculty member uses the NSF billable format. So let me go on to some um, other changes to the PAP guide um, for 23-1. Uh, the first is GOALI. Uh, GOALI stands for Grant Opportunities for Academic Liaison with Industry. It is a proposal type, and it's been there for, um, the program has been around for many years, and it's been um, a part of the PAP guide for at least the last few years. Well, we're modifying GOALI this, this time, however, to permit non-SBIR, STTR, small businesses to receive funding from a goalie award. Now, previously, no funds from the grant could go to any of the for-profit entities. There are requirements that these small businesses will need to meet to be eligible. And in addition to the eligibility uh, requirements, which are clearly specified, the size of the subaward to the small business partner must not exceed one third of the total um, award budget. The proposal must disclose any financial interest with that PI or co-PI or senior personnel and or the institution of higher education have in that small business par partner and identify appropriate mitigation of any uh, potential financial conflicts of interest. We have incorporated a new section on research security. Uh, a new section has been added that identifies the purpose of research security and NSF, as well as NSF's research security initiatives. The coverage also highlights what NSF's post-award disclosure requirements are. Um, this section is in advance of the research security program requirements specified in the NSPM 33 implementation guidance that I will discuss in the next slide. Implementation of the Build America, Buy America, and Made in America statutes. Now, this is a federal wide requirement that was actually already implemented by NSF um, by the required date of May 14th, but it just is important enough that we wanted to still highlight it. So there, we will be incorporating coverage on this topic in the PAP guide. The implementation again has already taken place by addition of a new term and condition that goes into each of our general sets of terms and conditions. The bottom line for this is that all iron, steel, manufactured projects and construction materials used and federally funded projects must be produced in the US. 
the awardee has to implement the requirements in its procurements, and the term and condition must flow down to all subawards and contracts at any tier. Again, you will see that the coverage is already there in our terms and conditions. If you have not yet noticed that, I would strongly encourage you to go in and take a look. Uh, incorporation of a new section on uh, scientific integrity. A new section on scientific integrity has been added to the PAP guide. Coverage on scientific integrity absolutely is not new to the PAP guide. What this added section does is now summarize NSF's expectations in the area of scientific integrity. All organizations and personnel supported by NSF are expected to uphold the highest standards for scientific integrity, which builds on obviously the key principles of honesty, objectivity, ethical behavior, transparency, and professionalism in the conduct of scientific uh, activities in an inclusive environment that is conducive to excellence in research and education. Organizations and all individuals supported by NSF uh, awards are reminded that the principles, expectations, and requirements um, that support scientific integrity are all to integral to multiple topics specified in the PAP guide. And in this section, we also highlight what these various parts of the PAP guide are. Things like human subjects, vertebrate animals, dual use research of concern, and the list goes on. And for the last set of bullets on this slide, there are going to be two new check boxes on the proposed um, cover sheet. Um, one is for uh, DERC, dual use research of concern, or potential life sciences, dual use research of concern. And that box will need to be checked if use of select agents or other enhanced potential pande pandemic pathogens are envisioned and those agents or pathogens are used in ways that lead to enhancement of specific properties specified within the policy. There is excellent new guidance included in both part one of the PAP guide pre-award on JERK, as well as any post-award requirements that would need um, to be put into place. The other new checkbox is for that um, plan for safe and inclusive field vessel and aircraft research, which I have already talked about. Mm -hmm.